Yeah. Bees Booger. Zoned out. No Philly. I zone out cause my mind cold. I'm like fat. I like thinking with my eyes closed. Eyes closed. I could count a million with a blindfold. Yeah. Getting out the trenches with my mind on. I'm Rest in peace to the guys. Some niggas I can't forget. I my man in the feds. I still be sending them pics. If the niggas city. ain't gang, we ain't laying the men. Two, two, threes Come like needles. How they going? Come on, man. In my bag, so in my bag, same nigga in the bed, or a bucket. Fuck I wear the bucket cause it's easier to tuck it. We don't do no petty murders, man, that's fuck shit. Cops on my ass, I can't wear my lace twice. Yeah. M came a 1500, it was trick dice. When the pussy that's good, my you know shit, you trick got dice. it twice. Yeah. And if that bees, you on point, that's my shit, I got it with him. Lil Ratchet, bitch, still at my mom's house. Ratchet. Don't like sucking dick, but a tongue so out. Down. I used to fuck them bitches on my mom's Oh, my mom cops, we all done that. Work in Miss Dawn house. We all done that. Life, you been a piece of shit. You only stole it Talk. cause you needed it. Come on, nigga, beans. don't amount to shit. The type to pop a perk just to beat his dick. I zone out cause my mind cold. I'm like fat, I like thinking with my eyes closed. Eyes closed. I could count a million with a blindfold. blindfold. Getting out the trenches with my mind on. Rest in peace to the guys, some niggas I can't forget. My man in the feds, I still be sending them pics. Right. If them niggas ain't gang, we ain't laying them in. Nah, Two, two threes, talk like that shit, baby. Zone out. Late song of the late week, baby. Song of the week, baby. Listen, man. I used to live with grandma, had no ready, to tell. We was yeah. down bad, Let's but we up mother, now. Man. Yeah. Free my you guys, ready? I can't wait for them to touch down. Yeah. Fluff the hood with nicks and powder, low. had that bitch Boy. buzzing. Can't stop, won't stop, how them bullets coming. The price high, you grab one, is cheaper by the day. Let's get it. Let's get it. Yeah, you know what's going on, man. Huh? You know what's going on. Me, 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 me. Million dollars worth of game. Right now, we got the legend in here, man. Mm. The legend. Mm. Oh, I'm talking yeah. about Jay Prince, man. Rap a lot of records. I'm talking about independently. He changed the game, man. He changed the game, man. This shit is serious, he man. Birth, he helped birth a lot of companies, though. Yes, he did. You know what I mean? A lot of people took his blueprint. Yeah, listen, yes, he, listen. A lot of people took his blueprint, but I'm going to say this, though. We're going to start this thing off right, man. Uh, before we even get started, we're going to say this, man. We're going to give rest in peace to NC from the rip. Yeah, I appreciate that. Rest, rest, in, rest in peace to NC, yeah. right? It's a big one. I'm talking about this. This is a. Uh, this is his brother from another. I'm talking about his brother, man. And um, what would NC say if he was here today and he seen all that you accomplished? Uh, man, he'd be smiling, face be bigger than the moon with a big smile on his face. Uh -huh. And you know, NC had a, a special little twang to his to his combo. <laughs> Get the motherfucker, man. You know what I mean? He, yeah. He, yeah, he was just a, a thorough dude, man. So he would be real proud of this movement going on right now. He you believed know, in it before I did. I heard about the story, man. Um, and, I, and I know it was, it was painful for you because I lost my brother, my big brother. And it was like when I heard about the whole story about him, you know what I mean? And how, how he, you know, how he expired, it was crazy, man. And it was like how you. You made a move to help him out of a situation, you know? He got out of the car, went on. Did you ever feel bad about that ever to yourself? Like, feel like, damn, you know, they was ready to lock him up. I get him out of the police car, and he go across the street, get back in it, and it happened. Yeah, oh, man. You know, this, this is heavy right here, uh, and this is what's so beautiful about this million dollars worth of game because ain't nobody ever asked me about the home in HNC, and he lived right here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But that was a hell of a uh, night, man, that night, you know, when he, you know, got into it with a few of the guys. They clashed, and one of the guys' homies that killed him came to me. He said, hey, man, you're the only one who can stop this, man. He said, won't you come stop this, man? He said, somebody going to hit, somebody going to miss. You know what I mean? I was with executives from A&M Records at the time, uh -huh. you know, uh, entertaining the Raheem situation and I put everything aside and I went outside and I got ENC out the back of a police car. Mm -hmm. I hollered at the sergeant. I say, hey, man, it's my man, man. I say, give him a give him a shot, man. He's going to go home, man. I said, I'm going to put him in my car. He going home. So I, I talked to the officer and let me get him out the back of the police car, mm -hmm. put him in the van, and the last thing he said to me, 
was, man, I'm going home. So I sit there and I'm observing him leave out the parking lot and I watch one of the other homies cut him off and point to him that them dudes he got into it with was across the street. So I'm not knowing What's what the saying? conversation yeah. was about, but I hear rubber burn and I see, you know, it's a hundred, about a hundred yards. I'm looking at it, you know, in slow motion. And I see him go fly over there and he hit the dude. You know, the dude had a pump shotgun standing out there. He drew down on the dude that told him they was over there because he made it there first. Mm -hmm. So NC see him draw down on him. So mm -hmm. NC hit the dude with the band. Boom. You know, I guess he thought he, you know what I mean, had hurt him bad enough to the extent where he was getting ready to get out the truck. And the homie came back up. Boom. Hit him in the side of the face. Boom. Slugs. Yeah. So by that time, I take off running over there to the car because I had my piece. I'm like, okay, I know what time it is now. Dude, them sped off. When I got there and looked at the home and half of his shit, you know, gone, you know, I, I grabbed him. I said, man, you fucked up. I say, can you hear me? I squeeze his hand, right? I say, you, you can hear me squeeze my hand. So he squeezed my hand. He grabbed uh the, the, the side thing in the van to pull himself up and went into a convulsion on me. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and we went and called 911, but that's, I lost the homie that night. So yeah, I wrestled with getting the homie out the back of a car, you know, for his head to get blowed off for a couple, for a minute years. away. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I know you wrestled because it's, it's, it's a painful thing. Yeah. After that, you, you know, in, you know, I always, I always thought about when I, when I thought about Texas, when I thought about music, when I thought about CEOs, I always thought about you, then I always thought about Tony Draper, because it was something that was in my mind. You guys in this music business, y'all was going number one on charts and all this stuff, and it was like, hold up. Opposite of y'all, you had dudes like Suge, you had dudes like Diddy, but these dudes had Clyde Davis and Jimmy Iovine. Y'all didn't had nothing. Yeah. So y'all had to pay. Y'all had to pay for marketing, and it was like, how was y'all able to do that? Because y'all didn't have the the guys behind y'all with all more money. You know, you didn't have Arista. You didn't have yeah. Interscope behind you. Y'all had just, I'm doing this out of pocket. Yeah, yeah. No, it was one of them situations where you didn't have a choice. You know what I mean? Because back when I kicked off, um, the West Coast record labels, the East Coast record, record labels, didn't believe. In the South. In the South, period. Mm -hmm. They criticized our slang. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they felt like we was too hard. We was talking about shit that was too rough. and They low-key thought y'all was slower, too. Yeah. yeah. A lot of that shit went on, so, you know, uh, it wasn't a choice. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't like maybe we wouldn't embrace, you know, the, the, the opportunity if they had give, gave it to us. But at that point, I'm like, you know, fuck them. They won't, they won't help them. I'm going to do this thing myself. You know what I mean? And, and and I had to learn the game through trial and error. And and I passed it on to Draper, the Master P, mm -hmm. the cash money, you know, mm -hmm. the same blueprint. Because that's, in my mind frame, I wanted to create a major with real niggas around the world. You know what I mean? I was all the way against the majors at that point. I'm right. like, we're going to be on some street shit and create majors in every state. Right. So all the intros of the Ghetto Boys album, if you go back and witness, that's what I was preaching. Mm -hmm. The seeds that I was planting. Right. You know what I mean? That's this the new dope game. Right. That was my mindset. Before we go any further, this episode of Me and I was worth a game is brought to you by New Amsterdam, Amsterdam Vodka. Vodka. Now um life ain't going your way. Shout out New Amsterdam Vodka. Caught your bitch cheating today. Shout out New Amsterdam Vodka. Uh, yeah. You thought that why it was coming to your fucking bank account and that bitch didn't come your way. Shout out New Amsterdam Vodka. <laughs> yeah, it's distilled five times. Five. Filtered three times. Three. If you speak Spanish, that's uno, dos, dos tres. tres. For that clean, crisp finish, you could drink it straight up on the rocks, juice, soda. Or you can make a classic New Amsterdam mule, however you like it. And it's the, about to be the, uh, you know, the finals. So, you know, you could... Buy some during the finals. You got baseball. You got hockey. 
So when you're out and about at your local liquor store, make sure you pick you up some New Amsterdam Vodka, the official vodka of Barstool Sports and the presenting sponsor of Million Dollars Worth of Game. Game. Now, Jay, let me ask you this. Is that the reason why really like the South is responsible for birthing the independent record labels because y'all really ain't wasn't given a fair shake and y'all ain't really have a, a shot. So y'all really had to do it that way. Is that's the reason why y'all responsible? Because when you look at all the independent record labels from back then that really won, they was all South labels, right? It wasn't a lot of East Coast. Uh, it wasn't black guys that had independent record labels around this country, like especially not on the East Coast. Yeah, I mean, the truth of the matter is they had production deals. You know what I mean? They, mm. they All of them had production deals. And uh, we came with that that ownership shit. We planted that seed, you know what I mean? Because uh, in my mind, you know, I, I'm thinking about generational wealth. Mm-hmm. Even back then, I'm thinking about my kids, my grandkids. So I understood that in order for them to keep eating, I had to own my masters. You know what I mean? I I learned a lot of shit from practice in the streets. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. we understand That's that. Good. You know what I mean? I was able and fortunate enough to have some practice before uh, you know entering different levels of the corporate game. And uh, with having the practice that I had, you know, the money that was offered to me didn't appear as uh, lucrative as it right. did to most. Right, I understand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you know. so at the end of the day, youngins, because sometimes game go over your head. You know what I'm saying? What the OG was saying in a in a in a broken down form, so y'all could understand, was he was already a fucking boss, so he didn't have a worker's mentality. Whereas though some people come into the game, they be workers. So you gotta you gotta figure out what lane you in and what's gonna work out best for you. You know, if you a boss and you take a worker's mentality, then you already lost. He was already thinking on a higher playing field. So you know what I'm saying? When you already out here and, and you already because any anything that any of y'all do illegal, what we always try to tell you, if you can hustle and you can operate on the illegal, the legal shit ain't nothing. The legal, once you really get and understand, it's just like anything else. Once you get in, you understand how it works and how things go and how things operate. If you got hustle, you got hustle. Yeah. It's just in you. If a motherfucker was lazy as a kid, a lot of times they lazy as an adult. Mm. Because you see the hustle in kids early, whether it's, oh, they got to get up, go to basketball training, they want to do this, they want to do that, they want to do, oh, you just want to sit in the house and play the games all day? Okay, Nick, I understand what type of shit you want. So if you got hustle, you got hustle. Jay had hustle in him, and he had vision. He understood where he was trying to go at with it. So you know, I just want to break that down for the youth. Now, Man, Jay, you know that was that was well interpreted. You know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah, that was well interpreted. And and just to just to follow up on that note, you know, because uh, street niggas, we some of the most brilliant niggas in the world. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Those that was successful in the street and are successful in the street, but it's it's so important to diversify your portfolio to corporate America. Right. Mm-hmm. Because your hustle that you have, you know, they can't even compete. You know what I mean? With all the three letter degrees and all that shit, they still can't compete right. to the real. Right. You know what I mean? So it's important to di- diversify to corporate America and don't allow fear to keep you in bondage from doing that because fear, you, it'll paralyze you. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it had me in bondage a long time. So put that fear aside and, and cross your game over like you cross niggas over on that, that basketball court right. and do your thing. And I would say this, because you saying you saying this about, because this this is just had me like, damn. He was doing this independent thing. He coming up, he learning the game, he moving around. You had a, you bought Run DMC some Rolexes. <laughs> How do, like like uh, what made you do that? <laughs> right, this back you put them some Rolex. This back yeah. in the game, and, and I'm gonna keep it all the way real. The down south niggas got a thing with the Rolex. Shout out to Tony Drake because he gave me my first president. You know Drake. what I mean? Yeah. Fresh off his motherfucking wrist, yeah. niggas on the label ain't like that either. But yeah. we ain't gonna talk about that. My yeah, man, you Drake. can't run DMC some Rolexes. Yeah, man. my man Drake. Yeah, me and Jam Master J, I connected with Jam Master J before Run and others. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And Jam Master J had a a street edge to himself where 
we recognize one another and I'm trying to get in the game yeah. at the time, you know what I mean? I'm trying to get in the game and it was just a welcome gift to H-Town. You know what I mean? Showing love. And I, Nigga and I, probably and was I, like 24. Yeah, I got y'all niggas yeah. some Rolexes. Drew yeah. Ron, the Rolls Royce keys. Say, man, yeah, you ain't, y'all don't drive in New York like this. Yeah. Ride the road. Right. Y'all yeah. in them yellow cabs. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so, damn. Like, one thing I can say, though, you the diversity king when you're saying diversify because you, you rapping. I can imagine how many different things you got your hands in, but I know. The boxing shit, you've been doing that for a minute. How did you get into the boxing? Did you just woke up one day and said, fuck it, I'm about to invest in some boxers? No. How, did, how did it happen? You know, boxing uh, was always my first love. You know, I was watching Don King, Muhammad Ali, then when I was a kid. And King, you know, with the hair. I, I just always loved King's swagger. <laughs> it was somebody's swagger. He was like a... Or uh, what what the old man would call a rebellious nigga. Mm -hmm. and King I, was and like I, the pimple box. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and I can I can tell I can tell from his swagger. So, and I, and I love the sport of boxing. I I feel like it's the most exciting sport in the world. So um, after the feds turned up on me, like real tough in ninety nine, you know, ninety nine two thousand, where you know they was trying to kill me. Damn. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, they put a hitman on me, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I decided to diversify my portfolio because, you know, every day I got up, they was harassing me. They was following my movement. So, you know, I prayed one night, man. I prayed one night, and um, I asked the Lord to bless me with a champion. And uh, I arranged a meeting, you know, because my target was Mike Tyson. I want to start at the top. My target was Mike Tyson, and, and Mike embraced the meeting right out here in Vegas. And uh, I came out here to meet Tyson in the gym, and I was excited because I had been, went to a few of his fights, but I had never seen him raw and uncut in the sparring. Yeah. So I walked in on the sparring session when mm. he was chunking that leather, mm -hmm. and you know what I mean? I was, I was, I was a kid in the candy store. Watching sound like 22, sound yeah. like a 38 was going <laughs> off. Hey, bop, yeah. Bop. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, you know, a long story short, you know, Floyd Mayweather came in the gym mm. around the same time. And he came up to me on two occasions where I was, you know, watching Tyson. But my focus was on Tyson. I didn't really know who Floyd was. So, bam, afterwards, me and Tyson, you know, went to the house and had a meeting. He got his wife at the time on the phone and introduced us and, you know, I'm thinking I'm on the team. He tell his wife, I want Jay Prince on the team, so I'm happy. I done mm. came here and accomplished, you know, being on the team with Mike Tyson and go back to the, the hotel at night and sleep good, wake up the next day and try to get with Tyson and the phones wasn't working. Damn, wait. So I'm oh, like, Mike, damn. Mike cut the phones off on I don't you? think it was Mike. I think oh. I think it may have been a little higher up. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? You they got this manager by the name of Shelly Finkel, who was competition at the time. I, oh, okay. I think he heard I was in town. and But it turned out to be a good story because Floyd had gave me his number. And I asked the homie, I said, who is this dude right here? He said, oh, this is the 130-pound champion. So, bam, red light go off in my head. I'm like, I prayed for a champion. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a praying man. Mm -hmm. Everything I ever wanted to attain and accomplish in life, I exercised the gift of prayer. It's free. Right? Right. So, bam, I believe that he's the answer to my prayer. And within two weeks, me and Floyd had done a deal, and I managed him for the next four years. Mm. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. True story. Right. Damn. This episode of Me and I Was Worth a Game is brought to you by Zip Recruiter. One thing about Zip Recruiter, matter of fact, right now, you can listen, all you employers out there, listen, it's summertime, it's hot. You don't have time to be going through all these unqualified candidates. Let Zip Recruiter do it for you for free. And guess what? This is why you're going to get it for free. All I need you to do is go to ZipRecruiter.com slash game, and you're going to be able to use Zip Recruiter for free. So while you're out here this summertime, you're laying on the beach, wherever you're at, you don't have to worry about just looking up all these candidates. They'll do it for you. I'm talking about they will find and match the right, the right candidates. I'm talking about the fit the job. I'm talking about all the jobs that you're offering, all you employees out there that's trying to go to ZipRecruiter.com slash game and listen, get it for free. They use powerful technology to find and match the right candidates for the job. 
You ain't got to do nothing. They got the technology. So why would you be doing it yourself when right now I'm telling you, you can use ZipRecruiter for free when you go to ZipRecruiter.com slash game. What are you waiting for? ZipRecruiter. And that's major now. It's 1996, right? I always knew about you. I always, you know, but I never really heard you talk. I never, it was like, it's like he don't say nothing. He just come through and chill. Like every time they see you in a magazine, whatever. And uh, around that time, first of all, Larry Jr., I appreciate you even being here, brother. You know what I mean? Um, and I hope, for me being in that belly of the beast for years, I hope that everything happened right for your father because I, I believe that he could be much value to the community and educating people about the different routes we don't need to take and what we could be doing out here. Uh, not just your father, there's a lot of our seniors that's in these walls that could be of great value you know, to our community if they get out because they got so much education and so much game of life, of what not to do in order to be able to operate out here successfully. You know what I mean? But in 1996, right, I was listening to something on Resurrection album, right? I just been rapping with these hunkers and your dad as usual. Because they ain't worried about me, they got me. But they worried about the kids. Because the youth is more feisty now than it was. And the cold game is what they're doing now. They didn't put the prisons on the open market. You know, it's on the stock exchange. Big companies own prisons now. They all got stock in prison. MasterCard, Smith Barney. These hunkers so cold out this way, they don't want to see me do nothing. They won't even let my family make no money. Even with the ghetto prisons closing. They won't even let my son, my wife, nobody do nothing. They mess with the clothing company. They've been going to the manufacturers. Their orders ain't getting there on time no more since, since uh, the government got involved with this case. Uh, they've been going to the stores, retailers, and telling them that they can't sell them. They've been uh, stopping the kids here in Chicago. You know, real ghetto boys, we're at ghetto prisoners, yeah. We have to look in the inside of the ghetto boys' album cover and, and order from there. We're going to order from there, you know, because we're going to support that. You know, it's political. To see, the mayor's scared of me. Yeah. The mayor's scared of me because... They, they won't lay you down and put a dick in your ass. If you move your ass, they consider you rebellious, you know. I'm moving my butt so they consider me a rebellious nigga. See, I'm telling these young boys to put them guns down and pick up that ballot, you know. Right. You know, you can kill as many niggas you want, as long as you don't go to the polls. Right. But, it, but if you go to the polls, they're going to snatch you off the streets, you know. If we don't do nothing about this stuff in a minute, shit, we at the point of no return. Now, I'm saying this to say this. How did you and Larry connect? Uh, <clears throat> Chicago was the first city to embrace rap a lot. Mm. You know what I mean? Before Houston did, Damn. before the South, before you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. They could relate to our movement. Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, the whole Midwest. Mm -hmm. I'm forever indebted to the Midwest because they embraced me before uh, before my Houston. Own. You know what I mean? So, therefore, with that being said, uh, Larry Hoover's presence was felt in Chicago. You know what I mean? They were bringing the ghetto boys to concert as they performed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was, and people showed up. So, I was given the invitation to go and meet with Larry Hoover. Mm -hmm. And it was an honor to go and meet with him because I had heard about him. And up on my arrival, you know, I witnessed a man in corduroy pants and alligator uh, shoes and and what kind of sweater he had on. Probably a coochie sweater. Coochie sweater, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a Texas nigga, right? Yeah. So I'm used to orange suits and, and shit like that. And, and, you know, the man was sharper than me. So I'm like, wow. But what was even more impressive about that meeting was his mind. You know what I mean? The walk that he and I took on that yard was life changing because of the words he said to me about lifting his people up mm -hmm. and the change that he wanted to bring about with the growth and develop movement was life changing. You know what I mean? I felt the brother's spirit almost like it was from up above. And uh, I wanted everybody else to hear it at that point. I, I didn't want to keep that to myself. And that was over 30 years ago. Yeah. I didn't want to keep it to myself. So, like, against all odds, uh, everybody you can think of saying, if you put this out, this going to happen, threats, warning from all the three-letter 
right. of people, you know, uh, we put it out and, and it was life changing, man. And that was our connection. It's the only time I ever met him, but it was a life a, a life lasting moment that exists to this day. Right. But I think what's so extraordinary about this, like I just said, a lot of people are just getting introduced to, uh, you know, Larry. They just getting introduced. And you're talking about a person that had that mindset of changing and uplifting people 30 something years ago when you first was introduced to them. Mm-hmm. So just imagine where his mind is at now and the possibilities of what type of value he could bring to the community out here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I'm going to let little Larry uh, Jr., he here with us, speak yes, on sir. that. But I'm going to just say that uh, the mind change that this brother can bring, you know, beginning with Chicago, because I actually believe the killing and different things that's going on in Chicago, if he was to be able to touch ground in the community, you know, it would, it would be like uh and I hate to compare it to this, but it'd be like, let's say Moses mm-hmm. came back with the Ten Commandments. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It was meaningful. But, you know, Larry, you, I know you have a lot to say about that, bro. Before you say anything, Larry, I can only imagine the type of programmers that he could put in community for these babies and these young cats. The programming, it'd be unbelievable. Go ahead, Larry. I mean, well, really that's the reason why they took him away, because them programs was being put in place. Talk, Back to, move the mic to you. Yeah, that, that, that's why they silenced them and took them away. These these type of programs was being put in place back then. You know, he was um, like y'all said early on, he was trying to. He's an example of what you don't want to do, and he was putting that message out there so he could save lives because he started seeing people that was my age when I was a youngster um, coming in there, and it was just some other things that he seen like on the news where he seen. He seen the police going into the projects, and they was going through just raiding everybody's apartments. And he was like, they treating them like, like they in here with us. So we came up with the concept of ghetto prisoner back then. But he knew he had some influence over the people, so he like, I'm going to do what I can to try to use my influence to try to change this. And that's when he started talking about voting and putting people in position so they can get laws changed and what have you so these type of activities wouldn't happen. He um he read the book The Boss by Mayor Daly, which was not the last Mayor Daly, but the, his actual father. And he came from the streets, and he took his influence and his power from the streets and got into politics. And they ran Chicago with an iron fist for for years and years. So that was his influence on what he wanted to do. He seen that he had the people. He that's when he started talking about we need to get. In, get into politics and, and vote so we can make changes out here. If we got the numbers, we are forced to be reckoned with. He wasn't interested in just um, his own individual group of people that looked up to him. He had respect from everybody in the city, all the, all the different organizations, because he knew how to treat a man with respect. He told me when a guy would come into the, come into the jails, he would introduce himself to him, regardless of who he was, what organization, so they can try to build some type of relationship right there so it wouldn't, they wouldn't meet each other when they was at odds. So he just knew how to show respect and how to bring people together. And he knew that it was always power in the numbers, and he wanted to use the power in the numbers to make changes for our community. Because he, you know, he, like you say, he made all the mistakes and had to live through everything that these youngsters are going through and trying to do. Like these stories that we hear, like he don't go into detail, but he know about a lot of this stuff already. A lot of it is different because of the, you know, the, the amount of respect and the way that everybody's involved in everybody's business. Every, nothing in the street is just whoever there is there and they in it. You know what I mean? He don't understand the way, you know, the way the world is moving right now, but um, he definitely understand what's going to happen if y'all don't, you know, we're going to make a change with the way we're living out here. So, you know, he's just all about making the mindset change. Mm-hmm. He already had that mindset, the that got you that that'll take you to jail. He knew what it take to do that. So he was trying to get people the mindset to not go to jail and make opportunity for ourselves. Let me ask you this. How was it for you growing up without your father? I mean it man, it was 
it was it was just my life. It was just something I grew accustomed to, you know. As a kid, when it came to situation where people's fathers was involved, I just didn't mention my father. You know, mm. I was, you know, it was just part of my life. My father just wasn't there. I would go visit my father every other weekend or what have you. I have to thank my mother and my grandmother and all them for making sure that I went to see my father constantly because it's a lot of people whose kids, if the mother and the father don't have a bond, I mean, it may not be a bond with the father side of the family, so that whole bond with the child is broken. So right. I just had to be happy that my family um, did everything that was necessary so we can have that bond and that could actually be my father. So I had a great father. I think he treated me better than other fathers would have because he knew that he wasn't at home with me. So right. we didn't have conflict. It was keeping everything a certain type of way. Right. And he didn't have, and, you know, anytime he called, he, you know, he, he wasn't out here. You know, a lot of times... As fathers, they get caught up in the street shit, the partying, the women, the the cars, the. And then you look up, your kid, seventeen. Yeah, yeah, we feel don't like, know what that could have been. Feel like feel like he don't know you. You know what I mean? So, you seen your father every other week. You know what I mean? I'm pretty yeah, sure for, for he had time. no dumb shit to do. So, so I'm pretty sure he was giving you all the game and knowledge. You just couldn't see him in the physical on the streets. Yeah, when he was in the state in Illinois, I, I got to see him a lot. He but was, they got him out of there. Yeah, he was first. He was an hour away. Then he wound up being like six six hours away. Then he was three hours away. But all them places we could get to yeah. easy. It's yeah. when they took him to Colorado when it's a big deal to try to get down there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to go back and pat myself on the back because of this whole um, uh, J. Prince Ghetto Boy thing. When we was doing shows, I was picking the talent at the time. Oh, and okay. I picked the Ghetto okay. Boy, so okay. I actually put all this together. Oh, okay. Because yeah. you know I, mean? okay. I was the young one listening to the, listening to the music. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I didn't know that, but that's... I salute. <laughs> see, look, he was the, he was the, he was the first A&R. Yeah. He was the A&R. He ain't, yeah. yeah, you ain't see... Prince skipped over that. He ain't hear me. Now, uh, yeah. now, how did the concert come? How did that come about? You talking about the, um, the with the for your dad. Drake and Kanye? Yeah, how did that come about? <laughs> oh, man, we, um, man, so he seen that we had a, just talking to him, knew that we had a relationship with um, Kanye and then with Drake through Jay. And he seen that we had this relationship, but with little stuff that he got to see, he seen that, um, that them guys was at odds, and he would hear about other artists and stuff, you know what I mean, killing each other and going to jail over back and forth nonsense. So just saying ain't there ain't something y'all could do to try to, um, you know, bring them together because they like on the, they the biggest artists in the world, and they into it. Ain't no need for them or none of their guys to wind up, um, you know what I mean, Somebody dying over whatever little beef they got. Usually, it's not the main artist in them situations. It's the guys around them that's trying to protect them. So it was like, you know, you can't try to bring them together to try yeah. to calm that down. Mm. And um, we we put our efforts there and brought them together, hoping that it would be a a blueprint for the other artists to try to follow, to look and see, like if these guys can um bring it together and put put their differences aside and make money and enjoy life, maybe some other people will follow suit because it, cause there's way too many of these guys out here, you know, feeling like they're living a gangster life when they should be living a millionaire life and they dying and losing everything when they just get to that position. They should be enjoying and bringing other people up instead of going to jail and, you know what I mean, dying and friends dying. I thought they became entertainers to get out the street. That's, that's what it's supposed to have been about, you know? Yes, sir. This episode of the Million Dollars Game is brought to you by BetterHelp. All listeners of Million Dollars River Game right now, you're getting 10% off. I'm talking about mm. your first month of BetterHelp. Need to go to betterhelp.com slash game and get your 10% off. But what I need to talk about is this. We got to stop thinking that it's weak to take care of your mental health. That's mm. a great thing. One thing about BetterHelp is an online therapy, right? Online therapy that offer video, phone, and even live chat sessions with a therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. So, you know, we be needing somebody to talk to. So if you do, mm -hmm. you can just do that. I, I use it as a great thing for me to talk to somebody, but I like to do the camera. Whatever, but we really need to start taking care of our mental health in a different way. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist under 48 hours. In the African-American community, it's a stigma. So... 
Uh, listen, man, BetterHelp is here. There's nothing wrong with getting you. You're not going to be looked at as weak. You need to really take care of yourself and stop looking about, you know, looking at how people are going to see you or worrying about the stigma. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people has used BetterHelp online therapy. What are you waiting for? BetterHelp. It's here to help you, man. It's here to help you take care of yourself, man. Stop playing games. Give it a try. Over 2 million people is on BetterHelp. BetterHelp.com slash game. All of y'all going to get 10% off your first month. BetterHelp. Welcome to another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game Business Spotlight. Listen, man, we got Mr. Phenomenal on. He's ready to give up some phenomenal game. I'm talking about, listen, this Metro 2 game, y'all not ready for it. And I'm talking about the credit. Listen, man, I'm not even. Next level <laughs> shit. Listen, this, this stuff is next level. You, when, when you put your paperwork in, ain't nobody going to argue with you. Ain't nobody going to debate. They're going to take that shit. Get it that right shit off. Come right off the credit. They, listen, Mr. Let's phenomenal go. got some phenomenal game. Now, let, let's get to this, man. But, but, but where did it all begin at? Where did it all begin? Hey, listen, you know, I, I decided that. I got to help the people. Okay. That's where it began. I said, you know, I can't, I can't put myself in a position where I'm winning and I ain't bringing people with me. Okay. I've been living off credit forever. And, be, and the reason why I've been able to leave off credit is because I understand. Our biggest expense in life, bro, is what we do not know. Yes. That's our biggest expense. So once I get educated and I understood like how credit works and the advantages that it was giving me, I'm like, yo, now nah, I got to get people to gain. Nah, you phenomenal now, but who, who sprinkled that phenomenal <laughs> game on you before you was phenomenal? You know what? I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna even lie. I'm really like I'm self taught, but I, what I will do is I'm gonna give somebody credit. I tapped in with my boy Neo, Nehemiah Davis. Shout out to Neo, my yeah, man. Shout out to Neo, yo, like the Matrix. He was like, yeah, that's my man. He was like, yo, That's-my like, guy. bro, it's time for you to turn up. And so, like, I was I was doing things, you know, what I'm saying my way. But when I tapped in with Neo, he like, yo, it's you got it. What you got your hands on, take it to another stratosphere. I'm like, yo, let's go, let's do it. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. And it just started happening. It just started happening, bro. It just started happening. But, 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 but you know, a lot of people hear about, oh, y'all can remove the credit. You got a lot of people, we could do this, we could do this. Ain't nobody up on that Metro 2 game. Nobody. Though. Break the game down. Nobody. Now, so this is what we're going to do. Y'all say this million dollars worth of game, right? Yes. We're going to get them a million dollars worth of game. We're going we to free the people. The streets need what I'm going to talk about. Mm. So this is what I need. This is what I need everybody who's watching this do. I need you, not only to take notes, but I need you to take action. Okay. Mm. Because most people, they, they get information. And they hear it and they be like, all right, that was cool. And they be like, yo, he dropped some crazy million dollars worth of game, but they don't do nothing with it. Mm. And so they stuck in the same poverty type of situation, right? So I'm going to break it down. All right, so y'all know that when, when Hen 500 came on, he went crazy with the game, right? Yes. What he was breaking down was called factual disputing. What I'm talking about is Metro 2 compliance. Totally different beast, totally different animal. But if you take what, what Hem gave you, and you, and you take what I gave you and, you and you mix them things up, even though they're two totally different animals. If you rocking his game and you rocking my game, you can't lose. Okay. But, here, but here go the difference, though. So with factual disputing, we're talking about what him 500 explained. Factual dispute is we're talking about the accuracy of accounts that's being reported. We're talking about the factual nature. And we're talking about, you know, yo, do I really own this account? Right. I'm, I'm talking about I may or may not own this account. But with Metro 2 compliance, I'm talking about this account don't even have the ability to be reported based upon compliance standard. On my, on my name. On my name. You know what I mean? So this is what people have to understand. There, there are laws and rules and regulations put in place for me, for, for Wallow, for Gil, for everybody in here. And based upon the standards that was put in place and the laws and the rules and regulations, if we don't, if we don't know these things and we're not educated... How are we going to really like learn? Take advantage. Like, like, exactly. How are we going to take advantage if we don't know what's going on, right? So let me, let me give you an example of how this works. You got the Fair Credit Reporting Act, right? Go ahead. That says, uh, based upon my credit, everything has to be reported fairly. That means that, you know, that's, everything is fair, right? That's the Fair Credit Reporting Act. That, that protects consumers. Then you got the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. That means that me... Gil, Wallow, we all have to have the equal opportunity at credit. You can't just go get a Benz and I don't have the same opportunity as you in regards to credit, right? Then you got something that was put in place in 1997 called Metro 2 Compliance, right? That was put in, that was put in place by the consumer data industry, right? So they said, yo, we need to put something in place that's going to protect the consumers that says, can these items even be reported, so now if we understand and know that there are things in place that protects us from items to even be reported, why are we, why are we taking advantage of that? So a lot of times this shit on people's jacket that ain't even supposed to be reported. You see what I'm saying? But we don't know. We're ignorant. So we just, oh, I got to figure it out with them. We, I got to pay this bill. And then they got the collection agency coming, all type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's the game. Like, we, we got to understand that we got to know the game so we can play the game. So I'm talking about, I'm putting people in a position where, yo, I'm going to give you the game. All you got to do is lock into the game, run the play, 
and you're going to be good because like they can't fight this. We, I'm talking about Metro 2 compliance. If, if the credit bureaus and, the, and this agency put this standard in place and we use the same standard against them that they put in place, how are they going to fight us? How are they going to fight us? Well, how? Mm-hmm. How? They, they can't. It's not possible. It ain't, they're going to be like, yo, let's put our hands up. This, we, know, we, know what, we know what kind of information, what kind of letter you sent to here, right? Mm-hmm. We already know. So we're just going to just, we, it's, it's a stick up. It's game over. But see, one thing, one thing, one thing that makes you so special, but I love, you know, our, our people always take care of our people. Mr. Phenomenal came in and said, listen, everybody, all you got to, everybody getting a free ebook on how to use this Metro 2 yes, compliance, sir. right? Yes, sir. And all everybody. you got to do, all you got to do is text game to 74121. That's it. 74121. You text game. You see it right here on the screen. And I'm telling you, he's going to give you a free ebook. I don't care if 100,000, 200,000. I don't care. Y'all all getting a free ebook. Yep. When you text game to 74121. Now, What's inside of this ebook? How do I how do I begin? I'm in uh, Omaha, Nebraska. My name Billy, and yep. my credit is jacked up. And yep. I, you know, I go get the ebook. And what do I learn? All right. So look, once you get the ebook, once you text the number, you get the ebook. Again, t- take advantage of the ebook. Inside the ebook, you're literally going to get access to a system. Now, watch this. Just the cold part right here. You're going to get access to a system that once you upload your credit report. Mr. Whoever from wherever you at, you upload your credit report into this system. The system is, is going to identify all the negative items for you. You ain't got to do no work. Then all you got to do is tell the system to attack, not dispute, because we're attacking based upon using they same Metro 2 compliance standard. Attack these items based upon Metro 2 compliance standard that they can't even be reported to my, my consumer credit profile. So once they literally do that, the system is going to automatically generate a letter for them. So you know how, again, with factual dispute, people put to about 609, 611, right? We ain't got to worry about that. The system is automatically going to put together a compliance-based dispute letter. It's going to put together the letter for you. All you and look, you ain't got to mail it off. Inside of the system, you pay a little bit extra, hit that little button. They're going to literally mail it off for you, too. They're going to send it to all these places. They're going to, they're going to send it to wherever the letter is supposed to go. If it's going to go to Experian, Equifax, TransUnion, the other fourth major player, Innovis, it'll send it to whatever, CoreLogic. Talk, talk about Innovis because a lot of people don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. So that's the fourth major player in the game right now. So they're, they're a big dog. they just as important as, you know, Experian, TransUnion, Equifax. They are on the level of them. They just haven't came up yet. It's kind of like nobody really know about Innovis. Nobody really know about Metro 2, right? So essentially, they are a big dog too. They, they in the game. That's a secondary bureau, just like the Core Logics, just like the Sage Streams, just like the, the Lexus Next. They are housing information that, you know, uh, is on our consumer credit profile. So when we go in and we think that we everything cool, we try to go get a car in our name, we try to go get a house, we try to go get all this stuff, but we can't get it because we may not see it on our, our profile, but the secondary bureau's got it. So when you go, you try to get something, they're going to they gonna validate and verify whether it's really supposed to be there or not or what's really going on in your profile. You're like, dang, how you, how you stick me up? How you going to say I can't get an apartment? How you going to say I can't get a car? But you don't even really know because the secondary bureau's is housing that. But guess what? We don't even really got to worry about the secondary bureau's with Metro 2. We going straight at their head because they put together the compliance standard. So I'm like, yo, I'm using the standard right against you. And nobody know mm. about it, Wallow. Nobody know. Mm. That's crazy. They ain't using it. Nobody know. You got 99% of people in America that's, that's got a, a credit repair organization. They doing factual dispute. So with me, bro, like I said, I'm here how for long, the people. How long do factual disputing take? <sighs> Man. Forever. Months on top of months. <laughs> I know that shit. It can take, it can take a minute. Because now, when you go to, a, to these companies and you, uh, I want to get my credit fixed. Yeah. They because got I didn't go to plan. a nigga on the street. So I yeah. fixed credit and I actually went to a company. Yeah. And fix, that shit took about five months, man. Yeah. That yeah. shit took about, it was some years ago, though, but yeah. that shit took. How a, much you paid them? Six hundred, yeah. So, yeah. so 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 with this metro, yeah. Two compliance. How long do that take? It don't take that long. Probably about seventy days. Mm. It take. Yeah. We some we some about putting somebody in position where they got jacked up credit. They could potentially have a seven hundred in about seventy days, which puts them in position to now seven hundred and seventy days. That's you see what I'm saying. Uh-huh. Seven hundred and seventy days. So now that puts them in position where they can go get a hundred thousand dollar line of credit in a hundred days. Yep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Once yep. again, once you know the game, you can play the game. Then you can address the game however you need to, and you can play it the right way. Right. Like you could, you could live. Like I'm teaching people how to live off credit, yo. Right. No matter what game you're in, you ain't playing the Listen, right. You don't know the rules. It, it yeah. don't make no sense that you, you like I could drive a hundred thousand dollar car. You could drive a hundred thousand dollar car. You could like why why Jane Doe from Cincinnati can't her credit jacked up. She can't get a car. She can't get an apartment. She can't have home ownership. She, she jacked up Based because of credit. stuff she did when she was young. The first time she got a credit card in the middle, she just started going crazy. No, she got to do is tap in with your motherfucking ebook, bro. Get the ebook for free. I'm right talking about free. Listen, I'm talking about for free. For free. for free. Like people literally DMing me every day, like, yo, 
You changed my life. You helped. Like, and, I'm, and I mean, they paying for that joint. And I'm giving it to them for free. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about people paying for the ebook. How much do the ebook cost normally? Normally about 150. Okay. And sometimes I run specials for like 47. Okay. So you're giving you know out hundreds of thousands of dollars because if 100,000 people, they, you're giving out a, a, a I'm million dollars. A million dollars worth of game. You're giving out a million dollars in real life. 100,000 <laughs> like, people get this. It's 1.5. Like seriously. See, I'm talking about, I'm teaching, like this is what y- y'all need this stuff. Y'all See, need the thing it. is, this, the, even the credit people going to tap in with your shit. Hey, yep. seriously. Because, because they, they don't, don't know. know. A lot of them don't know. They don't know. Right. So do you, do you consult, do you consult like credit, credit people? People that do credit? Yep, I do. Yep. But I, I got a whole team that do it. So 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 if I'm Johnny, uh Johnny do it all credit, right? Yep. From uh I don't know where, Wyoming. Yep. I come to you, how much I gotta charge you to get this game? How much are you gonna charge it's, him? It's it's an ebook. But no, I'm saying it's in the ebook. Yep. But if, but if I don't know nothing about the ebook and I'm, and I heard about you and I gotta come to you and you gotta train. Yep. How yep. much how much I gotta no, normal price twelve fifty. Okay. And then just for anybody that, that go to that book, that schedule consultation gonna be nine seventy five. Okay. I'm giving them game. Damn. We, I mean, we're going to clean them up. Mm. But the reality is that, think about this. This is what the word says. It say, if you fish for a man, you feed him for a day. Yep. But if you teach him how to fish, fish. you feed him for a lifetime. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, so why pay me 975 to, to repay right. your credit? Hey, I'll do it. My company will do it. But why pay us when you can go get this ebook for free? I make it make sense to me. Why, why, not, why not take the education and the knowledge yeah. and understanding and, 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 just, and, and just go run with it? So now... Now Wallace could clean his credit, but then he also could get Gilly straight. He gets mom straight. Yep. He get he get everybody. And then, the, and then I can start charging people. <laughs> you can because now you know what you're doing because you got the knowledge and information. You got the game. You got a million dollars worth of game in this ebook. So you even, got so, it. So 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 even with this Metro Two compliance, do I have to pay to get on some type of system or something to be able to use this? How much I got to pay? Got you. Like that's a great question. So the book you're gonna get the book for free inside of the book. It's a system that I reference to. I ain't gonna say the system because they need to go. They need to go get the book. Yeah. But it's a system inside the book. And the system to use it, you could do a, a pay as you go. You could pay. You could pay every thirty days, and it's one twenty five to just have access to the system that's going to generate the letters for you. One twenty five. One twenty five for how long? A year, a month? For one month. Okay. One twenty five for one month. You pay that one twenty five. You got access to the system to generate you letters for thirty days straight. So if I'm boo boo and I live in Harlem and I'm on the couch right now, yep. I get this ebook. Yep. I pay one twenty five to get inside there. Yep. That one twenty five give me access to do everybody that I know in Harlem stuff. Yep. And look. It don't matter if you send it one letter, 29 letters, 82 letters in each round. That system is going to say, hey, listen, you got access to the system now. If you want to generate a round of letters, right now the cost in the system is 15 bucks. And look, the reality is this. You, you paying 125 to have access to the system and you paying $15 within, within, I would say, three rounds, 70 days. You're going to be able to get whatever is on there pretty much off of there. So we're talking about 125 plus 15, 15, and 15, 45 bucks. We talk about what? Like a hundred, like under two hundred dollars. We talk about for under two hundred dollars. We talk about in, in, in three months. You got a clean slate, and I could mm. do. And I could, and, but but see, this is what I'm saying. I know I'm paying that fifteen, fifteen, eight times I send it around. But listen, yep. that that initial one twenty five. Yep, that get you access to I the could, system. I could do a hundred people. You could do all. You could do a hundred people, and it has got to be in thirty days because mm. that one twenty five is for every thirty days have access. So it, it don't matter so how many. So, it don't so, matter. So, so, so once so you do the first week, you don't give a fuck about the next one twenty five. You giving that shit up fast. Yeah. yeah. So 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 if you pay one twenty five, and I and, I and I do and I do let's say a hundred people at a, at a stack a person, do the math. Man, if you gave a one twenty five and you made three thousand, yeah, yeah, you like, uh, you like that's a damn, that's eight hundred percent fucking markup. Take look, this one twenty five every fucking month. Exactly. Hurry up. Exactly. You be looking at your phone, them bitches ain't take that one twenty five yet. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Waiting on. So think about this though, Gil. Look, they you pay the one twenty five. Let's just say. I only got to send two rounds of letters. So I paid 125, but then I paid another 30 and I got you straight. But you gave me a stack. What am I really out of? The $30 that I paid? So I'm, so I'm up 970 per person. Mm. You could do 10 people. That's $9,700. Now we making mm. six figures for the year. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait stop breaking that game down. What the fuck is you looking at this man like yeah. that for? <laughs> you fucking looking at him like you ready to quit, nigga. You <laughs> Cameraman I, I ready. To my head. He like this. No, I'm, See, I'm serious. Yeah. In his head, yeah. this shit, fuck is you I'm ready to start my own shit. See, the, and, that, and that's what I do. See, I, I could teach you that. I give you the game away, but I really, I really focus on my mentorship program, which is Dominate the Decade Mentorship Group, where I'm teaching people this game. I'm not out here trying to take all of the... What's for me is for me. How do I get into the mentor? If, if I want to get into Dominate the Decade, how do I get in there? You know what's cold about it? When they text that number, it's going to be a link right next to that book mm. that they can, they, can, they can check it out if they want to get in there. Mm. 
So mm-hmm. everything they can, they can right take that there. Link. Right, everything is right there. They can they can sign up for the mentorship program, and I'm going to teach them how to repair their credit, they sales, how to start their own credit repair organization so they can charge other people. I'm going to show them how to get a virtual assistant so the virtual assistant can actually do the process for them so they can be hands off. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to teach them how to live off credit cards to create passive income. You ever heard of manufacturer spending? I'm gonna teach. I'm gonna teach them that they get all of that in, it. and I'm gonna teach them about trade lines, which is the best kept secret because that's just a crazy boost to the credit profile. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about, bro. I'm giving out the keys. I got a. I got a 24 year old girl. She got in my program less than 90 days to be in my program. She's making six thousand dollars every two weeks. Mm-hmm. She what? She 24. She just bought herself a Benz. She mm-hmm. chilling at the crib. She she ch- she said, "Yo, you changed the game for me." She said, "You changed yeah. the game." I had a, I had a grown man in my program. He's he in there. He he did 30 days in my program. He said, "Yo, after day two, I couldn't take it." He said, "You brought me to tears." He mm-hmm. said, "The information you giving me," and I I ain't even I ain't even brought up funding. I teach people how to go get to the bag. I teach them how to go get to the bag. I'm talking about okay. So once your credit is straight, now what? What do I do with it? What is my game plan? What is my strategy? Like, how do I go get to the bag? I teach you how to go get to the bag. And not only that, not just wallow, go gilly, go get to the bag, but show other people in the hood and in the community how to get to the bag. And right now, we're going to show you because what you need to do, Mr. Phenomenal, he's giving out the game in his ebook, this Metro 2 compliance game. What you need to do, you need to text game to 74121, 74121. Text game, you're getting a free ebook. I don't care if 100,000 of y'all yep. get this ebook. You're getting this ebook, where's though? He told y'all, y'all can utilize these systems, pay one to 125 a month, have access to the system, and do everybody in the hood credit form. Yep. You can do everybody in your hood. You could do everybody in your county. You could do everybody in your city. You get online. You could do everything. Right now, we're giving you a million dollars worth of game. He's giving away a million dollars worth of book. These books is one fifty a pop, right? So if a hundred thousand y'all get them, that's one point five m's. So you listen. You you do the math. At the end of the day, what I need y'all to do now, I need y'all to go follow Mr. Phenomenal Power. Right? You see is that see is all this information right now, and I need you to text game seven four one two. One, what you want to say before we go, man? Hey, listen, I want to really give people um, an understanding of, again, where to go get the bag at, right? Mm-hmm. So I need people to start tapping in with these credit unions. Like, stop going to these traditional banks. They cool. That's cool. But I'm talking about this game right here. Go to these credit unions. And the reason why everybody want to go to credit unions and do business and build relationships is because credit unions are non-for-profit. They not-for-profit. So when you go to a credit union, you say, yo, I want to get an auto loan. Yo, I want to get a, a, a line of credit, personal or business. When you go in there and you tell them that, they more likely to do business with you and they're not trying to give you a high interest rate and they're not trying to grab money out your pocket. You know what I'm saying? Right. So they're going to like, yo, here go, here go a 10000 15000 20000 dollars line of credit. And yeah, we're going to get your account up. We're going to get you auto loan. We ain't going to run your credit, nothing crazy. Like, stop going to these banks. Stop going straight into these car lots and literally take, go into a credit union Establish a relationship. Say, yo, I got my LLC. Everything is on and popping. I got everything straight. I want to open me a personal account. Put like a hundred bucks in there. I want to open me a business account. Put like a hundred bucks in there. And just build on the relationship. And then you go back in there and say, yo, I want to get a line of credit. I want to do this. I want to do that. And you got the best chance at having success in regards to getting to that bag with credit unions other than traditional banks. That's That, that right there, that's a game changer. People right. going getting their head busted at a regular bank, man. Mr. Phenomenal, just gave y'all the game, man. Listen, man, tell them where to follow you at, man. Man, you can follow me on Instagram at Mr. Phenomenal Power. Right on the screen. You know what I'm saying? And you can follow me on Facebook at Dion Coopwood. So that's, just tap in with me, man. Let's, Listen, let's get man, to it. You got my brother right here. Listen. Yes. Gave Mr. out that game. He gave out phenomenal <laughs> game. He's giving out a million dollars worth of game. Once again, text game to seven. Four one two one seven four one two one, and that was another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game Man, Business Spotlight. Like that. Right. that was a real big movement for us because he planted that seed, and and we watered it and fertilized it and and, and brought it to fruition, and uh, it was it was important to us, man, to uh, try to accomplish a few things with that movement. You know, one being the first that that my brother saying, you know be an example for the culture to be able to see beef come together. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then on, a, on another note, we gave like over half a million dollars away to, uh, to prisoner reform, people who are actually on the ground that's fighting, you know, for the freedom of, uh, of, of, of inmates and accommodating the kids and different things, mm-hmm. or inmates and different things like that. And, and also we wanted to you know, bring a light to the First Step Act, you know what I mean, which, you know, Larry is qualified to uh, to get some, you know, some relief. justice with, relief with right now. And that's where interference came into play with this dude, uh, Rat, Officer Rat 100. 
You know what I mean? A lot of interference came into place with Officer Rat 100 because what he done, you know what I mean? And this has to be talked about because we're on a million dollars worth of game. Mm -hmm. And I got to get a game to the youth because I don't want them getting caught in no crosses where this Officer Rat 100 is concerned because he's a live rat, you know what I mean? And here's, here's the truth of what he done. You know, even though he tried to deceive and put, you know, our text messages, you know, in a, in a form where we was talking about apples, he wanted to switch the game up and say we're talking about oranges. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I got proof, and I'm going to show you all the, the real text messages that he didn't want people to see. Mm -hmm. But what this brother, you know what I mean, that called himself real, attempted to do and play, you know, with, 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 the old man, we call him the old man, we call him, I call him my brother, my friend, you know, but most of all with his freedom, you know, because on two occasions, one, him and his Chad, uh, what's his woman's name, Karen Chapman, you know, this is a lady that was entrusted to go in and interview, you know, Larry Hoover with an understanding of you bring this back to the family. Mm -hmm. We're not clearing a way for you to go and do this for no other reason. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't play like that, but that's what she done. She went and interviewed and ran off. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So what this dude has chosen to do is take a stand with a person like this, like when they was putting together the pardon for Larry a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And I let him tell that story. But I'm so, I'm feeling so good about it right now until <laughs> I'm gonna say, and what I don't yeah. cover you, you we're gonna do like Ron DMC. Mm -hmm. so, so she didn't, wouldn't give footage for the pardon. Now this, this is him being free. Mm -hmm. We just wanted, you know what I mean? Because when you're trying to humanize right. a person, then you use footage, you use their own words mm -hmm. to help right. in situations Absolutely. like this. So it was about the money with her. She asked, well, what am I getting out of this? Yeah, yeah let me reiterate that part. So when we were trying to put the pardon together, I said, we was trying to just get information on my father. So we, she had some actual footage of him. We like asked the attorneys, would that be good to have this footage to put on this part? They like, yeah, that'll be good. Let's see if we can try to do it. We tried some numbers. We caught up with the lady and I called and I asked her. I was like, oh, we need some of that footage because we're trying to put this part together. And she told me, she said, well, who go get paid for this? Well, how I'm gonna get paid for this? And I'm like, wow, this is about my father's freedom right here, and you want to know who's going to get paid for this footage. Mm. You know, so I don't know where she feels like she was um, really caring about our family, but um, she wanted to know who's going to get paid while we was trying to get this package together for this part. And then moving forward after that, that's around the time Kanye hit, went to the White House not too far before the end or after that, she seen that it was a buzz and my father's name was fresh in people's heads. And that's when she come from behind a rock somewhere, looking like it was an opportunity. Kanye reached out to her to try to get the footage again some years later. And I don't know where it happened at, but somehow Wack wound up in the middle of the mix. And Wack was bargain, bargain, uh, the middleman with the footage. First he was just, the middle man for her because she didn't want to speak to us. But then next thing you know, he's a partner in the whole situation. This is his footage. He got it in blah, blah, blah. So yeah, what, what this clown, what this clown done, you know, head up, like we right here, he was somebody else. You know what I mean? He portrayed to be, oh, I'm down with y'all. The only reason I wanted to talk to him, you know, I'm, I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt for my brother, because it's serious business, right? So I embraced that, I entertained that. And uh, you know, in retrospect, when I hear him take a different position, like he was partners with her and this and that the whole time, I'm like, oh, so this, this nigga one of them kind of niggas, well, all money, good money with him. You know what I mean? Everybody go. You know, I'm from the school where everybody don't go. You know what I mean? And when you're playing with a man, freedom like that, and everybody go, 
then, you know, I take that real personal. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why, you know, I want all the culture, because I'm a nigga that stands for the culture. You know what I mean? I love the hip-hop culture. You know, I, I put in a lot of work where the hip-hop culture is concerned. I blaze the trail. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when I see one, you know, trying to shit on Tupac, trying to shit on Nipsey, trying to shit on, you know, the homie Big U out there, trying to shit on Master P, you know, good nigga, real niggas, you know, Meek Mill. You know, I, I see a nigga get on a, a podcast and with, a, with another rat and go off on 21 Savage. I'm like, oh, this nigga got diarrhea at the mouth. He, he like full of shit, right? He, he the type of nigga that will shit in the bed and blame it on the baby. Huh. You know what I mean? Imagine that. You know, you take a raw shit in the bed and say, that's the baby <laughs> shit. I ain't shit it. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is how he go to trying to change narratives and different <laughs> shit about the truth. And uh, what be real cold about it is some people get lost along the way. You know what I mean? They get lost along the way and they'll roll off a cliff with, you know what I mean, a, a Officer Rat 100. And, uh, you know, I don't like this shit, man. I'm going to calm down and let y'all talk. But I hope the people feel me because, you know, I ain't the type of nigga. I don't believe in using rat and, like, some niggas call them punks. I, I, I remember calling niggas sissies. So he like a sissy to me. You know what I mean? He's a sissified nigga to me. And I can say a whole lot of other things, but I'm a, I'm a, we own million million dollars worth of game. Right. But, uh just, just, just for the record, I want all that smoke that one is talking about. You know, I, I know how to put all that out. So, but, y'all time. But yeah, one last thing. The bottom line is that the stuff was taken from us, and he partnered partnered up with the lady to act like it was his, and I'm gonna sell it back to you when it was ours in the first place, and act like he's a, a street dude and he respect my old man and respect everything. Who is a real dude that's go partner up with this chick that stole something and try to go in front of the world like he really had a right to do it? Like he trying to, you know, he putting he putting people in bad positions out there. It's, it's people that's, you know, that's, that's real upset about that. And I don't got nothing to, you know what I mean? I don't have nothing to do with them. I, I don't know what their head is, but, you know, he... He, he keeps just jumping out there in the deep water, man. You told a million dollars worth of game is brought to you by Game Time. Sports, live concerts, events. I'm talking about them last minute tickets, seats you probably never get is on Game Time. What you need to do right now, you need to download the Game Time app. You see us right now, we ready to go to the game. Download the Game Time app right now, create a login and redeem code dollars, D-O-L-L-A-Z. And off your first purchase, you get $20 off. Download the, I'm talking about last minute tickets. Download game time. What are you waiting for? This summer, you got all types of shows going on. You got Wiz Khalifa, Alicia Keys, Pusha T, Kendrick Lamar. I'm talking about this going down. And you want them last minute tickets and some of them tickets that you'll never get, some seats you'll probably never get. And it's not just shows, you also got sporting events. So what you need to do right now is download game time, game time app right now. And, you know what I mean, log in, create a login, and redeem code dollars, D-O-L-L-A-Z, and get $20 off your first purchase, game time. Let me ask you a question, Jay. It, you know, now we're talking about Colin, we in California. It seemed like, uh, you know, early stages of Death Row Records. Mm. Did, you, did you have anything to do with that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, early stages of Death Row Record. Me and the homie Mike. Harris, you know what I mean? I know Mike, you know, we was friends before all of this record company shit, right? And uh, Mike ended up getting his case and going in there, you know what I mean, doing his thing. He called me one day, and I asked the homie, I said, you still got juice in the street? Because at that time, I'm buzzing, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? The very thing that they laughed about, you know, me uh, pulling over to the curve and saying, oh, this is where the new money is at. Mm -hmm. in the rap business. That was funny to mm -hmm. niggas back then. They thought it was a game. Yeah, no, yeah. it was funny. It was, a, it was a laughing thing. You know, you go do that shit, nigga, whoop, whoop. I'm going to do this here. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll do y'all thing. I'm going to go do this. So um, 
But anyway, after one half time to sit and think a lot of times, you know, good thinking, when you know how to think, you know, conquer a lot of bullshit. And, he, and he's a thinker. So he and I, you know, had conversations about that. And I actually sent a group I had called the Convicts down Big Mike and 3-2, you know, down with their movement in the beginning, you know, that ignited everything. And we've heard Snoop publicly, you know, uh, admit on a few times how he got game from 3-2, you know, a lot of his slang and different shit like that. So we brainstormed on that issue in the beginning, and it was when I was on a phone call with Suge, you know what I mean? Back then, all three of us can be on a call. Mm -hmm. And uh, I heard some reckless, and I didn't want to be on them, you know, tape calls and shit with that going on. So I I, I bagged up. Y'all do y'all thing. You don't owe me nothing. Rap a lot is what I do. You know what I mean? And and we moved on from there. But, you know, I want I got to share this before we move on in that direction, man. I okay. want I want to share this right here because this is Kanye. And and I know Ye ain't gonna have no problem with me. I, I want you to read it so they won't say I played no. This is a text from here. And say with her now, bro. Okay, this has been exhausting. Too much That's him talking to Wack one hundred. Okay, this is this has been exhausting. Too much game plan. What is she looking for? Bro, tell me about it. It's not us. It's men stuck between two women, bro. You're with Karen, correct? Just making sure I know what we're talking about. Jay Prince is a better businessman than me. I'm stepping out of this and letting him handle. It's too many games for me. Okay. Now, if you want to keep on going, you can keep on going. But clearly... They was trying to work some shit on him that he wasn't in agreement with. So this is how I get in the mix. Because he says, too many games playing. Why Why you want to play games around the old man freedom? You know what I mean? Why the games playing? So I come in the loop to try and, you know what I mean, bring some, some real uh, accommodation to the situation. And, you know, we ain't got to stay there no longer. Right. But it's a... I'm going I'm to end up letting everybody see all this shit because that shit he sent out there is, is, is a bunch of bootleg shit where he changed the whole narrative, but this the real root. Right. Too much game plan. Right. <laughs> now, you, you you let him go. On the, therefore, you say, you know what, Mike? Sure, I'm going to stay out of this. I'm going to let y'all handle your business be based off a dispute over the phone. I said, I'm back up. But I noticed that you got a lot of, lot of respect uh, in California. What's that about? Yeah, well, I, I believe, man, that the real respect, the real all over the world, you know what I mean, when you really see it and, and tap into it. I, I'm that way. Mm -hmm. If I see a real, if he on the moon, and I and I see realness, I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to salute mm -hmm. it. I'm going to respect it. Mm -hmm. I ain't no hater. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Some niggas hate realness when they right. see it. They, they genuinely mm -hmm. is on the move mm -hmm. to keep niggas that's locked up, locked up, you know, this is what Officer Rat 100 is doing. A nigga that's locked up, he working to keep them locked up. Mm. And niggas that's free, he working to get them locked up. But in California, you know, I've been playing out there for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I uh, uh, got a lot of groups that I put out in California. You know, a lot of rolling 60 homies, jungles. You know, I, I went through... I rode by myself through all these hoods. Mm -hmm. I met these, I was solo. Mm -hmm. Went in the jungle, went to the rolling 60s, build relationships. And, uh, you know, things grew from there. You know, it grew from there. I let them know, I ain't hating on your red, I ain't hating on your blue, I'm green. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the flag I'm raving, that money green flag. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's the flag so. everybody re respect. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, they recognize the real. I recognize the real and a lot of strong relationships out there even to this day. Now, you got one of the coldest niggas in the game, Shakur Stevenson. What's going to be What's gonna be his hardest fight? Is it going to be Devin Haney? Is it going to be Javante yeah. Tank Davis? Is it going to – what fight is – what fight is is, is going to be the pay-per-view year from now – maybe two years from now, because I think you got one of the next big pay-per-view stars 
to to like walk the planet. Yeah, I think Shakur's hardest fight is gonna be within himself. Mm. You know what I mean? I think uh, him staying focused, you know, staying focused and, and keeping that work ethic and everything uh, uh, intact with all the millions that he's gonna make because it, it's a challenge, man, mm-hmm. with, with getting all that money on your plate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a real challenge, mm-hmm. you know. Getting it is one thing, keeping it is another. So that's where the real challenge is going to be because the gifts he got is, is God-given. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's right. from up above. Right. So That shit different. Yeah. Well, he got you on his side, so, you know, you had it and kept it forever. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you, you should be able to direct people how to keep yeah. it. Yeah, because yeah. when you come in, like, no, just think about this. This got to be the first boxing promoter to come in the game, say, I'm coming in the game. I want to get in the boxing. I want to manage Mike Tyson. Like, wait, nigga, like, yeah, he not like the Mike. Boo-boo who, uh, who's a hell of a nigga in the amateurs. And, right the uh, mic. And, no, he was right the mic. Like, so his fucking mindset was just different. No, Mike, I'm trying to get in the business <laughs> with you. Like, wait, who you managing boxing? I ain't never managed a boxer in my fucking life. I do, I do records, Mike. Man, I want to, I want to manage you, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. And then, he don't get to manage Mike, but Floyd come in the gym. How the fuck that happened? And Floyd's a fan. Yeah. So he's looking at you in a whole different light than Mike. He like, yo, I listen to the ghetto boys, man. He respects you on the business tip, and then you're managing Floyd. Yeah. But that shit would have never happened if he had lower level thinking. Yeah. If a yeah. nigga wasn't thinking like yeah. a boss. Yeah. yeah. If a nigga didn't have a yeah. mentality of, no, 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 I ain't, I ain't even trying to start at the bottom. Yeah. I'm trying to come in at the top. Yeah, and if I wasn't a believer in exercising faith. Right, absolutely. You well, if you, if, if you out here and you doing anything and you ain't got God in your life, then that's on you. Yeah. You know, you, you, you work that out when you get to wherever you go. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know what's crazy? God, God has really been on your side, Prince. Yeah. Um, back in the day, you said that it was a hit man yeah. put on you, mm. but you're still here. Oh, yeah. Speak about that. Oh, man, you know, let me testify to what you said first, you know, amen. Yes. You know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, I, I've been, I get this analogy where, you know, I'm like uh, right in the center of his hand and ants, termites, everything all around me, and he protect me and don't allow none of it to touch me. Mm-hmm. And then he deliver my enemies and make them my footstools. You know what I mean? So... Uh, I have to testify to that one, first of all, but it's a true story. You know, it's a true story where I've always been a target. I don't, I don't know how having a life uh, without being a target by uh, the police, C, I mean, FBI, all these. I don't know what life feel like without it. Mm-hmm. You know, I've always been a target. Uh, I witnessed those before me in my hood being targets. So I done became immune to it to a certain extent because it been a lifestyle with me. But, you know, it's a couple uh, agents, man. Uh, one by the name of Jack Schumacher and the other one by the name of Chad Scott. And I wrote about this in my book, The Art and Science of Respect. And uh, these guys, one of them had killed like seven or eight people. Damn. He, that's why I call him a hit man. He, this is an officer with bodies. Mm. Is, which is highly abnormal for an officer to have, one officer to have that many bodies, right? So he was assigned to Jay Prince to take Jay Prince down, you know, him and Chad Scott. And uh, one night they pulled me over, uh, leaving my office on the side of the freeway, and i never been pulled over one spot to, to be told to go somewhere else and stop. Right, pull me over, say, oh, you go over there to the McDonald's, and we'll, you know, I'm gonna meet you over there. So, bam, I pull over to the McDonald's, it's black dark over there at the McDonald's. I'm like, damn, I see a Jeep and a Cutlass over there. But I got homies behind me because I, I move in a special way, right? So, I tell the homie, I ain't, I ain't pulling over there, y'all just follow me, you know, and also in the shell where the light at. So bam, I went over to the light. 
I'm a light nigga. I ain't trying to, <laughs> you know what I mean? Embrace that darkness, right? You know, I know about the darkness. The fucking right. <laughs> so I go to the light, and he come up to the car, and he like, uh, why you didn't fucking pull over? I say, sir, I didn't want to think you was trying to harm me in that dark, and I didn't want you to think I was trying to harm you in that dark. What's the problem? Oh, you were swerving. So you got the wrong man. I don't drink. And this, and this, and this is an FBI agent. This is a this is a a, a regular cop. A regular cop. Yeah, but what you call them? them patrol. Patrol. They put him on me first to send me to them. So I'm talking to him and I'm watching his eyes, right? And he's looking over there in that darkness. I don't know what's in that darkness. I don't know that's who they You know were. you ain't fucking with that dog. I'm standing in the light. He's I'm a light man. man. You already told us. <laughs> so, you know, he tell me, he said, where are your guns? So right then, I'm like, damn, I ain't even gave you my gun license. I got a license. Buddy. I'm like, call my name out. I say, man, my guns is under my seat. I say, my hand's on the steering wheel. So what's the problem? How much money you got on you? I say, man, you need to borrow some money or something? Why you asking me about my money? <laughs> Right? So uh, he told me to get out the car. I get out the car, and he go around and, you know, say, well, look at my guns or put them, you know, out of the you know, protective spot or whatever he was trying to do. So the man passed my guns up and started looking and searching the car. So I step around him. I say, man, why are you violating my rights, man, searching my car? He jumped, get back over there. Get, I say, why are you violating my rights, though? You searching my car for what? So he come back around, and he looking over there. By this time, the cutlass from across the street come over, and a, a guy with an army fatigue suit with, with black paint on his eyes, like the football players, right? So I'm looking at this clown like, who in the fuck is this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I'm thinking, is this a civilian? I don't know what's going Why he on. Over here? Right? Right. Like he was hunting. So, so by that time, you know, he... He pulled off the, the, the green Jeep circling. So both of the vehicles from across the street circling. And uh, by this time, he come back and give me a warning, a warning ticket. So I said, I'll be damned. So I get home, you know, I leave the station. By that time, the shit was over. Homers was swerving. The, the sta- I'm, I'm sure it was discouraging because everybody showed up, you know, in that 15, 20 minutes or whatever. So I get home, check my gun. I got two bullets missing. I'm like, damn. And I go to thinking, like, what did they want to do to me and that dog? <laughs> right? What did they want to do to me and that dog? So at that point, I knew, you know, because I had been getting threats from them on a few occasions about what they're going to do to me if this happened to they witness. And, you know, they were sending shit to me. They was, uh, uh, like, harassing and assaulting you know, people that work for me, taking their jewelry, you know what I mean? So all of this went on, man, and I finally uh, decided to hire an investigator to investigate them, you know what I mean? And that's when a whole lot of shit came to light because we tapped into an ex-lieutenant that was no longer a lieutenant of Schumacher's, and he just told us everything about how, how many murders this dude had that was questionable, and uh, just a lot of shit in that investigation came out, which ultimately led me going to uh, Washington, D.C. with Congresswoman Maxine Waters and Janet Reno, the late, great Janet Reno. And, uh, you know, I always tell everybody Maxine Waters is what I consider uh, a hip-hop angel, you know, for our race, for people that uh, mean right, because if she don't take a stand, then it would be a whole nother story if her and Janet Reno don't take a stand and at least let me come and put some things on record. And all I wanted to put on record was I'm in fear of my life. Mm -hmm. That's what I went to tell them, because if I happen to come on top of these people that's trying to hit me, y'all don't be mad. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, feel my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they got snipers out here yeah, at, the, yeah. at the goddamn McDonald's that don't want goddamn. It's dark. They don't want two cheeseburger yeah. meals. They trying to do some. <laughs> they trying to do some other shit. Yeah, they was trying to work him out. <laughs> he was trying to get OG a goddamn workout, yeah. man, out there. But good thing you hit your streets to tell me. Yeah, but so so before I can make it home, good from now. They didn't check and found jewelry at the laws and. Stole and had all kinds of possessions that they had, and it's the real kicker. The dude Chad Scott, who showed up that night, just got busted last year. Uh. You know what I mean? It's been over a decade ago. I, I put the spotlight on this clown. He got busted last year, man, and got by 15, 20 years for the very same thing. You know what I mean? He was damn, ruined, damn, you know, ruining crazy. niggas' lives. He ruined a whole bunch of niggas' lives. You got cops out here really think it's training day, huh? Yeah, before Denzel. Oh. That's deep. Some shit, man. Listen, man, y'all got anything else you want to you say? I, I got to ask him something. Okay, go ahead. I remember you did a deal. I know you had New Tribe, you know, Virgin, <laughs> but you, you did a part, you did something with Rick Rubin and them. Death yeah. America. Yeah. How did that go? Yeah, Rick Rubin, man, was one of the first deals that I'd done after we went gold. Yeah, you know what I mean? I always respected Russell Simmons and Rick Rubin movement, you know. Uh-huh. And uh, we came together, and, of course, we changed that name from G-H-E-T-T-O, that white America, yeah. home, to G-E-T-O, the Ghetto Boys. And we put out uh, the album, the Ghetto Boys, Ghetto Boys, or something, which almost went platinum with Rick Rubin. But here's what... The interesting turn about the Rick Rubin situation. Uh, Geffen Records on it, David Geffen. David Geffen. You know, now he had Slayer. He, he had, had all, all the big boys. Yeah, all the heavy metal shit. Yeah, that was, big shit. Yeah, spitting the same lyrical content that the Ghetto Boys was spitting, but he decided he don't want to put the Ghetto Boys. So I was confused about this shit, right? Mm-hmm. But I understood what that meant. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, so this shit still go on even in the music the, business. The music business, right? Because y'all so, had proof of sound concept, y'all was already gold. Cool. Hey man, we had all of that, man, but we were some reckless talking niggas. And it was okay for the heavy metal artists and all of them to talk that shit. They were devil worshiping shit, but they had a problem and wouldn't let Rick put us out. And I done that deal based on having access right, to, to that machine. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's how I was able to get out of that Rick Rubin deal after uh, that album because I let Rick know. Even though Rick Rick had got a, a major blessing by being able to get rele- released, he went down like a 20 some million dollar new deal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm like, Rick, well, we gotta go. We ain't signed up just to do you and whoever. You know what I mean? So. You know, he uh, ultimately agreed to that, and Mind Playing Tricks was our next thing we followed up with. I knew he was mad as shit he agreed to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you try to double back. Did, did, we, did we sign that contract yet, Nick? <laughs> I don't know if I want to agree to that, because when that Mind Playing Tricks came out, I think that's when, I don't know. He might, because he think he a hip hop historian, but I think that's right. Rallo is goddamn hip hop. Thank you. Thank I, got you. To, I got to testify he, to that shit. He, he heard, he heard, he see. This I nigga that come shit. up with Listen, some shit I'm going to break I'm going to talk about Texas well, right Hold on, yeah. but I think what? that's when the East Coast started respecting that shit. That shit was different. When mind playing tricks on me came out. Four quarter room, laying at candles. It was a whole different joint. You know, listen, Scarface. A night I can't sleep. But what that shit came on the East Coast. And then when Mr. Scarface. Back that shit came out. It was a whole different thing on the East Coast. That's all you heard in Philly. Right, right. That shit, every right. car was hitting that shit, but I'm going to say this. Mr. Mr. Scarface, that's all you I'm gonna heard. I'm going to talk about this. Talk about Texas, right? You had a lot of the more albums. You had, a, what was it? S South Distribution or some shit. So South. So South. Yeah, So South. You had Southwest Distributor, right? You had a lot. Listen, the shit that was going on down in Texas, you had a lot of independent that came after y'all. Shout out to shout out to a lot of them cats that took some of y'all blueprint yeah. and really made money independent. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, yeah. Fat Pat. I'm talking about 
Lil Kiki. Yeah. You had a lot of Squish your house. Listen, Squish, Squish your house. Squish your house. Yeah. house. Yeah. All you know what I mean? What about Slim Screw, Thug? Listen, rest in peace, yeah. DJ Screw. Uh, listen, Slim. you had a lot of people out there. You had this thing by called Southwood, but then you had Pen and Pixel, right? Now, 21 Savage just had an album, him and Metro Boom, and then they used it, the theme. Cash Money used to use Pen and Pixel. Master P used the Pen and Pixel. Yeah. Pen and Pixel was a one-stop shop. Suave House. And I'm going to say this, though. I'm surprised that they nobody is doing that right now. If somebody did that right now, they'd kill them. But I heard you gave Pen and Pixel their first shot. But I'm, I'm, before I say that, let me break it down. Pen and Pixel was a place that if you rapping, they would do your CD cover. They would do posters for you. They would do merch for you. They would do stickers for you. They did everything. I'm talking about if you look at all the Master P catalog, Cash Money, they did all them covers in – they probably did like 20,000 different covers in the rap game around the country. And that's all they did was design covers and do artwork and posters. And but they bring your shit to life. It was two brothers, and I heard you gave, yeah. them, you gave them their first shot. True story. Aaron Brock, you know, he, back in, what, 86, 87, uh, they came and joined forces with me and, and my partner at the time, Cliff Blodgett. And, uh, yeah, they started that company, man, and done their thing. They killed the game. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you know you're a true OG, too. Yeah. It's all the true OGs called niggas by their first and last name. Yeah, <laughs> Michael Stewart. Yeah, back in the Lonnie, day. <laughs> Lonnie Lemon. Right. All that shit. They all young niggas. Y'all be like, bullet head. <laughs> Hold on, no, shoot him up. Oh, yeah. But but I see, yeah. this is what I want to know. What gave you that courage and that just, you, you really had belief in yourself because you always stepped to somebody. If they had, if they had something going on, because if you listen to all the people that you was connected, if they had something going on, you were stepping to them trying to bring you value. And a lot of people today, and I want you to educate the young people if you can, give them some game. A lot of people today, they step to people with no value. They just step to people, put me on, I, I can rap, I can do it. And it's like no value. What's the importance of like believing in yourself when you got value and trying to connect with people that could go to the next level? Yeah, um, it's, it's real important, man, to try and surround yourself with like-minded individuals. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, like I remember on the come up where people in my own household was telling me to be normal, you can't do this, you know, this ain't gonna work, all the discouraging shit. And uh, one of the key things that really, you know, helped me out is to surround myself with like-minded individuals. So I'm, I'm gonna encourage everybody to have somebody on your team that's gonna believe in you, gonna ride with you and got the same work ethic that you have, you know what I mean? That's the beginning, and I think that's the foundation to doing any everything. And, and from there, you want to lawyers and different things that people that know the rules of the game, so you don't get your your back end knocked out of pocket. Right? Yeah, <laughs> right. the back end serious. Right. <laughs> you know, and and you got to surround yourself with people who got vision, man. Who can who can see as far down the street as you? Yeah, because you know, you you tell a motherfucker. Oh, I'm about to buy a $5 million house and they won't be believe it. Like, damn, that's it. But $5 million to a motherfucker that got some real money is equivalent to you going to the store and buying a bag of fucking chips. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So really? it, it, you got to understand that all this shit out here is obtainable. You can make it happen. Just like Jay made it happen. Just like this nigga was locked up for 20 years. All the jobs he had to do in prison, being a lifeguard in the shower and... There's no fucking life, Captain of the I'm wrestling team, life, and and running karaoke it. night, and the, it's bullshit, and the, and, the, and, the, and the pimp, and all that shit he had to do to make it through to get out here, to only have his feet on land for five years, and he got three benzes, multiple yeah. houses, That's big shit M Ms in his account. Yeah, it, it ain't no fucking excuses out here. Yeah. No, ain't no. You, excuses. you only gonna go as far as you can believe. This motherfucker belief, I think he believed that he's like 6'9", 260. Oh, yeah, he, I believe all that Because when he go in the room, he think he, <laughs> he ain't getting no dumb. Going in with yeah. Mike Tyson, he I'm coming out here with the deal. Yeah. Refrigerator pair. He walking in there like. <laughs> Even Mike had to finesse him while he was there. Yeah. Yeah, everything's good. <laughs> so he leave. Everything Die. began up here. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So if you don't believe it, then you ain't got nothing coming. Fucking right. That's real. And you got to believe it. And I'm a big believer in sp speaking shit into existence. Oh, man. You know, I said on the record, four years before he came home, and all I really want is for Wallow to come home, and when my little cousin touch, we going to get this stunting on, nigga. It's happening. We, it's happening. Yeah. It's in really, it's really and happening I believe in this. a different fucking way. I believe this in Thursday nights. 
that y'all had in the basketball game? Down yeah, down in the fifth quarter, yeah. I'd have came if, through and cooked y'all. I'd have left with all the money. He'd have left, left, left with all, with all the fucking money. money. <laughs> I'd have left all the Thursday night yeah. games down in the fifth quarter. I'd have left with uh, all man. the fucking the money. Fucking money. You hear me? Boy, y'all know some shit, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about crime went down in the city on Thursday night. I know. <laughs> Everybody was there. They said they was there watching that shit. I'd have won so much there to chase me up out of that joint. You hear me? They just, nigga don't ever yeah. come back, nigga. Yeah, my little yeah. nigga from the fifth ward would have probably tried to slap me all in the head <laughs> with the gun and all. I don't want so much money down there. Yeah. Then, then I'd have been talking shit. They wouldn't have liked that, man. They'd have, yeah. they'd have tried to do me dirty down in the fifth ward. Thank God Tony ain't take me to none of them joints down there because I would have left with you know my game nice. They call me Chauncey Gillips like that. And, and Damian Gillard, damn Grant Gill. Oh, man. Yeah. Sam Gill Cell. You know they, damn, they, all the Gills except for Kendall. Yeah, they don't, they better not call me that nigga. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna say this, man. Yeah. Being as though we right here and we represent, I'm gonna give a shout out to somebody that's very important to me and Gil from Texas. Shout out to Trade the Truth. Yeah. You're always out there. You always the first yeah, one man. to run, drop everything All right. when shit is going down with the people yeah. in the community. Real life superhero. I don't care if it's flood. I don't life, care if it's kid. Whatever it is, man. You just yeah. always, man. And uh, them trade days be un- unimaginable. Real one. For all right. you young Real cats one. that's coming up in this game. Get to a trade rapping, day. And you and you starting off, you get your hot, take your take yourself down to, a, to trade a trade day. And you know I me mean, and, and and really connect and connect. I'm telling you, man, you're gonna it's un, it's an unbelievable experience, man. Make sure y'all tap into that, man. But shout out to Trey, man. Trey yeah. the truth, man. Right, man. It, it ain't it, it's nothing like not forgetting where you come from. Mm-hmm. You do not I mean, forget. I don't I don't like a nigga that forget where yeah. he came from. Whether Real it's talk. basketball, football, whatever ball. Right. Let's not disown where we come from. Okay. Absolutely. In some kind of aspect, give back. Right. That's what it's about. That's all it's about with me. And that's all it's about with us. Y'all know we give it, give it back to the community every day. That's what it's about, bigging up our people, just because we in position to do it. You know what I mean? Not because anything else, just because we in position to make it happen. So that's why we do it. But man, yeah. we wanna we wanna uh thank the motherfucking the king for coming through, man, and bless Free Lag Hoover. Free lag, man. Yeah. Appreciate Free you lag coming Hoover, on Larry man. and just sharing your story about your right. journey. Cause it's I know it's real person. I know it's personal and that's a private story right. of what you went through growing up without your father. And just it's real it's really emotional for you because I see it in you because it's like yeah. it's been a fight. Unbelievable fight, but man, you keep Especially fighting. Especially your man. dad being who he is as yeah. well, you know what I mean? So last time I visited him, he told me, keep on swinging, whatever you do. That's don't what it's stop, about. Don't stop swinging at them. And this is a swing right here, just getting the information out to right. more people. Y'all, y'all confirmation of what a swing is. Appreciate that, Appreciate man. Y'all, that, y'all man. turn nothing into something. This is a perfect example of turning nothing into something. This is a perfect example of not having no excuses. None. You know what I mean? If one can goddamn do what y'all doing, do what I done, mm-hmm. then we inspirations for everybody. That's absolutely. Be done. Because you got your own island. Yeah. <laughs> two of Prince just, Islands. He got two Islands. This nigga just shit. he throw twenties in the fireplace in the winter to keep the house crazy, warm man. and shit. He ain't been getting money for yeah. so long. It's, yeah. I'm just yeah. mad at him. He, yeah. he, 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 nigga be eating so long. That's crazy. They don't remember that. Nigga ain't got one picture when he was fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> he had a diamond ring. Nigga on back fourteen in the day. with a diamond ring in the gang. <laughs> nigga. But appreciate you for coming yeah, through, OG, no, man. I appreciate you. You know what bro. I mean? The solid always going to keep it solid, man. Me and I was worth a game, and it's just like that. Right.